Hey everybody, welcome back to Double D Vintage Baseball Cards. My name is Dylan, and this is just a collector's video, me sharing how my collection is growing. I got some epic pickups. Um, I got some mini collections to share with you guys, as I love doing. As a card comes in, I'll grab some cards from my collection that these go with and share all of them and share a couple line them up do what i love doing and that's sharing and talking about baseball cards and sharing my journey and my collection with you guys so without further ado um i will put one card out there just to give you guys a clue on what's coming in more ways than one right there um as you guys i let the cat out of the bag i finished that wall project and it's a tops themed wall the entire thing is going to be tops history so i've been trying to collect i have two of these so far these 1969 tops decals which i shared this before um i'm just trying to get one of everything that tops created that will fit on my wall um and there will be things that i don't want um as of now but there's a lot of things that I love, and those I love. I mean, that was like 15 bucks or 20 bucks total. Um, and this next card is my very first Walter Johnson. And this thing is sick. It's from the 1948 Topps Magic Photos set. And I'm giving a shout out to Paul and Leah from Fast Breaks and Breakfast. He shared his wall, his tops wall with us. And he shared his 1948 tops magic card and or photo card. And I always knew these existed, but I had never seen one in the flesh, never looked for them. Um, just knew of them from the history of tops. And I never wanted one because they were so small. But once I saw his, I go, yeah, I have to have one. And then I go, dude, I don't have a Walter Johnson card of any shape that is you know with relative vintage let's just say that um so i'm like dude that's the card i want it looks beautiful these you believe it or not you put these in water and then the image appears so i don't know whether if you have like a dull one that when you put it in water that it, it would get darker you know because there's a lot online that just don't have this vibrancy to them and these are really little cards like look at that really little but they have backs on them so these are ma literally magic cards and there was no need for me to get a high grade example and i thought this you, this is this is stunning black and white cards themselves you really can get away with low grade this has got creases and wrinkles on it that i had never even seen until i'm looking through the screen at the card right now because it's bigger on the screen than it is in my hand like in my hand that's what you see like you see it's just a cool piece to display walter johnson this guy pitched in my hometown of huntington beach california as a professional for a time um really I've read two books on Walter Johnson, but I'm not going to be spinning a bunch of facts about Walter Johnson right now because I just, I'm I'm not that guy. I, I can't recall perfect time and place of where these players are a lot of the times, but I know so many stories. Um, but I just, I, it's scary for me to say things and not be like dead accurate because then you'll get a comment. I'm more like, dude, look at this baseball card right here. I mean, I had to have one, and why not a Walter Johnson? This was 100 to $125. Buy it now. I might have made an offer or might not have been. I can't remember. But that, to me, I was like, dude, no brainer. So we'll put that. And these are in Drew's slabs. You guys got to check out Drew, the Vintage Legacy, if you are interested in these awesome holsters um for graded cards or any kind of cards anything man they're awesome and he's selling to go to the national this next pickup just another inspired pickup that i never I always poo pooed these cards why because i always just thought they were like ugly to be quite frank like like i always thought they were really uh 
dull and the images were junk. But once I heard Sammy Thunder have this gentleman who went to Venezuela to find these cards or didn't even know they existed, and the story of them coming over here said, well, I need to find one. And there was one that was ending at an auction literally within that week. And one that fit my eye, most importantly, because you guys know I want my cards to look beautiful. And I want to spend the least amount of money possible on that card. And I've never had a card with missing pieces on the back. And I wasn't willing to do that yet. Whether I do at some point in my collecting journey, I'm sure I will. But right now I wanted the back to all to be there and I wanted the front to be centered and I wanted the image to be clean. I wanted the card to look beautiful. And I had no idea that these were different size to prelude the next batch. I didn't know they were a different size. You can't tell because it's clear, but this is smaller than a regular Topps card. I always thought they were larger looking at these it just, it blew my mind when I got it in hand and now I definitely have a new rabbit hole to chase and I'm gonna be chasing centered, beautiful image versions of these Venezuela. And this happens to be a 1967 Topps Venezuelan, number 206, Harmon Kilbrew, in case you're listening, Dude, I love that people, you don't need to watch my show and I love channels, you don't need to watch because I will tell you what every card is I'm sharing and talk about it and you can go on eBay after and look at it or just know in your brain what it looks like. And this card is sick, it's beautiful, beautiful. So I will be looking for these and looking for them on eBay and at the National. They are not easy to come by that look this good very hard especially because th these were all glued in most of them were all glued in albums so to get this one is an sgc4 i don't care if this is a one or a ten i don't want the card to look like that and this was 127 dollars i won this at auction and from me looking at the others on ebay i mean i've looked at thousands by now <laughs> Uh, those are not easy to come by ones that look like this, but they're out there and you know, I'm going to find them. So I'm just thrilled to death. Add that to my tops wall. What I want to know if anyone can answer out there, I haven't researched it is whether Venezuela had the actual rights to print the cards. I know from what the story was told on Sammy Thunder's channel when he interviewed the guy, um, forgive me, I don't remember his name, um, who went over there with his friends and got these. He said that Top sent them the printing plates, but I don't know whether it was licensed. I, I would love to know that information. If somebody knows, can put that in the comments, that would be great. Um, one day I'll find out, probably at the National and talk to people. All right, that's the first round of beautiful cards. And now we're sticking in the vintage theme. Let me replace these guys right here. It's so funny. I mean, nine minutes in and I, like when I'm by myself, I'll spend like, you know, 15 minutes on one card just staring at it. I'll get lost on my wall. Ooh, I don't want to show that yet. And put this guy right in the center. You know what? I'm going to use these. These are all going to be even. I just get lost in my cards. And that's what I love about baseball cards. You can just, when you grew up collecting cards or you you find them later in life, whatever draws you to them, it's a childhood experience. And I get completely lost when I look at my wall and I just love it. So I'm gonna share my Nolan Ryan's 19 well these are these are all 1970s Nolan Ryan's in the Angels uniform these are all the ones that I have let me put this one right there and the one in the center is from 
no other than Hammer44. Check out his channel. This was gifted to me like insane 1979 tops. Nolan Ryan, beautifully centered in a gorgeous slab. And it means so much to me. And it goes perfectly with my collection of Nolan Ryan. Let's go like this. Go right there. Go right there. Now, a reason I'm not sharing every one of these with you right now, I have the 77 tops out. I have the 73 Nolan Ryan out. You've seen those. I have a 72 tops, a different copy than what you've seen before. I have doubles of this card when I find it centered and beautiful. I just can't resist. This has that tiny little nick right there. And this is just an extremely beautifully bright and well-centered baseball card. 1972 tops, Nolan Ryan. Man, I love this card. That's why I have two of them. This one, I, I don't know if I've even shared this one before. I've had this for like a year. And I bought this because it looks so nice. I couldn't resist. And it was like 115 bucks. So I said, yeah, dude, all day long. An eight cost, I think my 4.5 looks even better than this. The one that you, the one that you guys have seen. But I couldn't resist on this one either. Um, you could buy an eight that's most likely off-centered, diamond cut most likely. 400 to $500 that'll cost you. And dare I say, both of my copies look better than most eights out there. There are exceptions, of course. A perfectly centered eight will at least look as good as my copies and maybe better. I got my 75 tops, which I am so bummed this week because I was watching one because this is a copy that I would love to get a better version of. Because of the print lines on here, the print dots. Other than that, this 1975 Topps Nolan Ryan is just a beautiful baseball card. Beautifully centered. He's got his Angels uniform, but I missed one this week. I don't do snipes because I don't want to get myself into trouble. And I do enjoy making sure I really want the card. And if I did snipes, man, I'd be like setting way too many snipes, buying way too many cards. And I saw one that was ending and I followed it for seven days. And it was a four and it was just stunning copy. It was this copy except without the white dots, which I don't want. But this was like 20 bucks too. I think I paid 25 bucks for this probably two years ago now as I sold my other one that I had and uh, went for a better better looking copy for a millis millimeter of the price. Now, here's my pickup, guys. I freaking love this card. 1978 tops. Nolan Ryan. Now, I have looked at Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of copies of this card right here. And I love the copy that I ended up with. And this was $12. Yes, $12. And yes, those scratches are on the case. 12 bucks. And he was late. So I, I emailed him. I go, hey, he hasn't moved. And he goes, oh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry sit on my desk and I completely forgot I'll send you something else and he sent me a graded card slabbed up of Mike Trout a leader's card I was like no way that's sick so 12 bucks and I got another one and look at this example it's beautiful 1978 tops Nolan Ryan this happens to be an EX5 PSA graded I only say that because people listening, you want to know what you're looking at or you know what I'm looking at. It's a stunning copy of a 78 Topps card. Really nicely centered. 
Now, perfect centering on these 78s is a slightly thicker border on the top than on the two sides to match here to here to have that perfectly centered. But I will take a dead centered one like this where the border is exact same around. And I'll also accept the ones that are slightly thicker up here. And so the same from here to here. The PSA 10 also accepts both types, whether it's centered top to bottom or dead centered like this with the, the border being dead centered. Both of them can be PSA 10s. And that's what I do when I'm looking for centered cards. I type in the highest grades and I look through a bunch of copies. And there is tens of this. Um, there's tens of, actually, I don't know if I saw a 10 of Nolan Ryan when I looked for this one. Um, so I hunted a PSA 10 78 card. I, I looked through a bunch just for the centering. And then you hunt a bunch of Ryans to see what you're looking for, whether there's a print line that's in all of them. And this one, all in all, is a stunning baseball card. I would love, I say this a lot, and I truly mean it, if I could have every one of my baseball cards look as good as this one, I'd snap my fingers. Done. I just think that is what I want in a card right there. There's my Nolan Ryan 70s, 1970s collection. I love them. I really love looking at them together, all in the Angels Uni. Let me put that over here. Zoom you guys out. I mean, look at that, you guys. Focus. Dead centered baseball cards. That's what I love about them. You, there is issues with some of them. I would like a different one when you're you're up close to see the white specs. Um, there is a little mark on that one. This one, perfect. This one, there's better images. I need another one because this one, notoriously, it has a fuzzier face. It's very hard to find a perfectly clear one. That one, perfect. Um, but you can't argue of the fact that centered cards just look good. They look right, and I know off-centered cards look awesome, and they, you, you, they're desirable, and I collected them for years. Centered cards, you can't you can't talk crap on a nice centered card. You just can't. You can't say it's an ugly card. Where off-centered can really stir the pot or a bad image or anything. But if you can connect the docs, connect the dots on a card like this. Seventy-eight tops, Nolan Ryan, where the image and the quality of the card, the centering, you can't get better, in my opinion. A 10 is gonna look just like that, and that one costs 12 bucks. A 10, I think, could go for who knows. A nine, I think they're $2,000. This 1973 Topps Nolan Ryan, all day long. I love Nolan Ryan in his Angels uniform. It just hits the right spot for me. And then I got buddies who want to see him in his Mets uniform. You know, I, I would much prefer Angels, but his rookie card still to me is my all-time favorite Nolan Ryan card. I always have that on my wall, and simply for the fact that I remember seeing it in the, as a kid across the street at my neighbor's house. George, I've talked about him before, had this insane collection. I'm talking when I was like five, six, seven. I saw that collection. All right, I'm going to share one more. No, I'm going to share two more rounds. I'm going to remove all the Nolan Ryans. Back the camera up. About right there and I'm going to put up the next ones every card I buy fits in my collection now it's not like they didn't before YouTube I was just buying PSA 7s um, you know if I love the card I just buy it that's how it was for 20 years but now when I buy a card there's so much more that goes into it and I'm buying these cards that I like dreamt of as a kid and that's where I'm going with the next one 
And you guys have seen, uh, I'm trying to get, I love little collections. I would love to have all the Donruss Elite cards. One, not all the cards, but one from each set. Because these were like impossible as a kid. These might be the greatest looking baseball cards of all time. I kid you not. This one I'm holding, this 1992 Donruss Ricky Henderson, the Legend series, the ones that are numbered out of 7,500. This might be Ricky Henderson's best looking baseball card. In my eyes, it is. It's my favorite looking Ricky. And that even tops over his rookie card. I think this card is just magical. Like, I just picture myself as a kid, this in the middle of those dull cards from 92 Donruss. Like, they might add a little shine to them and nothing like you see this. I mean, it's spectacular. So I've had that card for quite some time. I've shared it before, but I got two more I just bought. And the first one is pretty funny because I didn't know it was this big. <laughs> I wanted a 1993 Donner C. Lee. What I really want is the Ryan Sandberg autograph. I mean, uh, Cal Ripken I want the Ryan Samberg too. The Cal Ripken Jr. autograph. But that's going to have to wait for the time being. But I bought this 1993 Donruss Elite. Number 13, Barry Bonds. This is in a Beckett slab. The other one was an SGC 9 for those listening. And I thought this was the normal size card. But if, you, if you're watching, you can see there's a size difference. But if you're not, these are called Supers. And I did not know that. This was $24, I think. And these are numbered out of 5,000. I'm really stoked on it. I love it. I still want a normal size. But when you put these three together, like I'm going to share my next pickup. My, God, like childhood dream card. And this next one cost me... Is 1991. Now, anyone out there can answer this. I tried to find out. But this is a Donruss. 1991 Donruss. Frank Thomas. The Elite Series. Where he has three bats in his hand. And he's got that smile on his face. Tell me. these At, at a SGC, they label this 1991 Leaf. I know it says leaf on the back, so I'm assuming whoever graded this, I've seen others like this, just didn't know what they were looking at and just read the leaf because technically these are Donruss cards. They came out of Donruss packs. So I'm just wondering if anyone out there knows, is this a different card than the Donruss? I don't think it is. This one's also numbered out of 10,000. I love this card. When it showed up, I just I just can't get enough of it. Childhood dream. This is in an SGC nine, and this cost it was one hundred and twenty five or one hundred and thirty five bucks. It was a buy it now, no offer, just boom. I hit the button. I love it. I just love it. I love my little mini collection, and I I really have the ones that I want as far as the looks for the elite except i want a normal size version of the 93 don russ um but i think i have the ones i really want minus the cal ripkin and the ryan sandberg um autograph copies but we'll see i'll probably come across others that i really want from different years um but right now i'm just thrilled to death it's been uh two years probably between the first one and the second one, or a year, something like that, maybe a year and a half, maybe longer. But I'm just, I, I just love it. I love these elites. I, I can't get enough of them. The shine is insane. So, last group of cards right here. I'm collecting one super tough tops card from every year that they start doing inserts and tops i'm also including tops chrome because they have the same design so both because it's all about design for me but 
I gave myself free reign on what I wanted to go within those parameters. Did I want a base card of everyone? Yes. So I did buy base cards of all of them and I'm slabbing them up. I've slabbed them up, but I don't want to display those at all times because some of the sets have colors on the borders. I want to know what they look like, but I gave myself free reign to get one rare card from every set and I'm splitting them in between all my players that I collect. And this so happens to be Ichiro pickup, not this one, but one I'm gonna share. You guys have seen this one before. These are just insane. 2002 Topps Chrome Gold Refractor Ichiro. I can't wait to show you guys the trifecta. I'm calling this the trifecta right here. We're gonna end it on the trifecta. This is his rookie cup. This cost me, look at the shine, look at the etching on this card. Look at that. Now, I definitely would like to find a better centered copy. Um, I'm, I was, I'm much more aware of my modern card centering now than I was when I was first buying modern cards. I just figured, you know, they, they, they don't stick out to me like a store thumb, like the, like the vintage, but I need to look at that. I need to be aware of that. And yeah, I, when I find another eight that is well centered and it cost me what this cost me, and it goes 290 or something, I'll scoop it and then I'll sell this one. But in the meantime, I'm really happy I have it and I'm, it doesn't look crazy off centered to me. It, it, I don't know why that is, but that's just how it is. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna force myself to make sure I look at centering, which I did on my final copy here. Actually, these both these, I, I looked at centering before I purchased them. You guys have seen this 2003 Topps Chrome Gold Refractor of Ichiro. And these were numbered. The last one were not serial numbered. Um, I don't know exactly how many there were. Um, I haven't looked, looked it up because I don't look these up I don't look up how rare a card is most of the time until I make my own slabs. And this one I slabbed up myself. So I had to look up what, how rare were these were. These were one in this in 2003 Topps Chrome. The gold refractors number to 449 were numbered, were one in every eight packs. But you also have to remember one in every eight packs, you're just getting one gold card. And there's probably 200 to 300 cards in the set look at the back here so the odds you times that by eight so the odds just go ridiculously up and these are just stunning i'm a gold guy i have been a gold guy since the very first moment i decided to collect mike trout cards a couple years ago and dive into the modern i've been a fan of gold because gold has been around the longest in my mind whether that's top chrome gold or the gold number to the year, just gold. Gold's forever. I, I just, I love the look of them. They match every card. Look at the shine, the etching. Beautiful refractors back in the day. They still have cards that have the same amount of reflection to today. And I'm gonna do a video to share those cards with you guys Let me just get that shine right to show you guys if you're new at collecting modern like what ones have the best shine because you really start getting to know the shine and the etching as you buy these um since i don't see cards in the flesh i don't go to card shows i don't have them there's my little one over here but nobody has anything so this is my next pickup i got this next one for 90 bucks 2014 PSA graded Ichiro Suzuki Gold Refractor. These are unnumbered again. The tops completely dropped the ball back then. I don't even think 2005 has gold refractors. This is 2004, but I don't even think 2005 has gold refractors. They have this gold refractor that's a, a super refractor, they call it. So, it tops just kind of blew it in those beginning years. 
when they started doing these because in 2009 i think was the first year they numbered them to 50 but before that it was just a crapshoot how rare they were going to be that year look at the shine look at the etching this is an awesome baseball card 2004 tops chrome ichiro gold refractor psa 8 dead centered man give me the eights in these all sorry about that all day every day it saves me a bunch of money and when the card's centered man they look good so that's my run i'm really proud of this run like as a collector like just neat to see and these are all on my wall all lined up in a row they take up the spots of 2002 2003 and 2004 tops because that's their designs whether the colors were different the borders on the regular base this was the design and i love looking at the designs over the years and now i can collect my favorite players so i have i don't have all the runs all i don't have a a tops chrome refractor from every year but i will and the guys i'm buying are my guys like frank thomas um ichiro pujols mike trout judge um and um matsui and then i will have a couple other random ones um uh, if they just hit the spot but my goal is to have one from every year i don't need to buy the pujols in any of these years because I have the Ichiro and I probably won't either because I want my hobby funds to go to go further. Otherwise it just gets a little crazy. So I'm really creating these boundaries and these rules as I go along in this modern game because there's a lot more to choose from. And it's a lot easier to buy cards faster than for me on vintage because vintage I want perfectly centered where if you're not a centering guy, you could buy vintage as fast as the sun um but modern you can go down so many different ways so i'm really strict with myself now um having the best time collecting ever in my life because i'm collecting cards that i bought packs of i was buying boxes in the 2000s that's why i love the 2000s and i was watching baseball in the 2000s watching ichiro and pujols and it's the first real first time in my life that i really remember watching baseball like i remember the games like i watched it as a kid all the time angels were my thing any game i was on tv but i don't remember what happened to any of the games i don't remember who they were playing i don't remember any of that but i remember it later so that's I'm, and most importantly i collected so many baseball cards in the 2000s i was collecting vintage but i was buying boxes and cases of the 2000s and opening them so i know how hard this stuff is to pull and i remember holding certain re gold refractors from certain years of just random players because you didn't you never got the good guys it was so hard to get good guys on the actual refractors you wanted so i'm going back and collecting them while they're still cheap i mean they're not cheap that was 300 bucks or 280 bucks or whatever that was 75 bucks or something can't remember off the top of my head i bought it ungraded as you can see this was 90 bucks so you know do the math you know you're close to 500 bucks for those three cards no joke but i don't want a million different cards and i want to collect it in a way that i think is going to hold value and if cards get more popular will increase in value so that's what i got for you guys i hope you guys had a blast coming along my journey and you're enjoying watching my collection come to life in front of your eyes and morph and change in a way that just f fulfills me as a collector so thanks guys and be inspired don't be influenced shaka